Robinson. He even went down the sideline and he's got Cass Decker bringing you UCLA football content all throughout the year for LA Football Network. What is up, Bruin Bible listeners? We have another advertisement for you. We are so lucky to be sponsored by the great people at Athletic Greens. Uh, I started taking Athletic Greens specifically because I was lacking energy, lacking focus throughout the day, and needed some special pick-me-up ingredients to make things happen in my life. Athletic Greens has done just that. I've become absolutely addicted to the process. It has over 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, adaptogens to make your life easier uh, by doing this during the day. I like to take it to start my mornings off. I like to do it before a workout. makes you feel energized, focused, and just have a lot more energy throughout the day than I typically expected. But right now, is the, it's the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. Uh, that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Uh, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to be give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash LAFB. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash LAFB to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens, a game changer when it comes to your health and your focus and your mindset. Now to the Bruin Bible. What's up, Bruin Bible listeners? This is your host, Will Decker. Wanted to bring you the sponsors for today's episode, Bet Online, where the gambling starts. I've got a bunch of good bets going on right now. I've got the Lakers making the playoffs. We've got futures bets coming around for MLB baseball. March Madness is around the corner. NBA playoffs on the horizon, too. Make sure to check out all of the gambling and all of your gambling needs at Bet Online where the gambling starts. Make sure to use promo code LAFB to get a little discount. Uh, everything is great on Bet Online. I use it weekly for all my gambling needs. Make sure to check it out. LAFB gambling, and now to the Bruin Bible. What is up, Bruin Bible listeners? Will Decker, your host. We got a second timer coming back on the program. You may know him from the 93 and 94 seasons as your Bruins starting quarterback himself. My friend and your favorite, Mr. Wayne Cook, making your return to the Bruin Bible. Wayne, what is going on, buddy? How you doing? Will, doesn't it seem like we've gone way too long without football? I mean, obviously, I mean, it's fun watching the basketball team. I'm, I'm locked in. I'm, I'm right there. Baseball team, softball team, I'm locked in. But football's football. So I, I, I think, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready for spring practice to start, which is right around the corner. Yeah, just about two weeks till spring practice starts up. And we're about 164 days, roughly, to UCLA football, man. Wayne, it's going to be a long summer for the two of us talking ball for our beloved Bruins. I wanted to bring you on for a special thing. We're doing quarterback week here on the Bruin Bible. And the quarterback depth chart, I think people, when they talk about UCLA football, and we were able to get this, you know, commitment from a five-star talent, that a lot of people just said, hey, he's got to start. There's no other options out there. Dante Moore's got to be the guy leading the charge. When I believe, and I think even Chip Kelly believes, if you talk to him at the Sun Bowl and really much the last press availability he had, he goes, Dante's going to have to come here. He's going to have to earn it away from a lot of credible candidates to take over the starting job. I'm going to get four guys that we're going to talk about when it comes to this space. Uh, you know, Luke Duncan, I think he's got a bright future at UCLA. I would think he would redshirt, so I'm not going to include him on this list. But, Wayne, another reason I wanted to talk to you about this was because you are so uniquely qualified to talk about quarterback battles, given yours in UCLA when you won the job in 93 over the likes of Rob Walker. I want to hear, what's it like to be in a quarterback competition, and when did you know you had the starting job going into the 93 season? So, although things have changed a lot, um, I think high school quarterbacks are way further along than, when, than we used to be. With all the camps and all the 
especially if you're a, a kid that's a high, highly ranked recruit, you're working with former NFL quarterbacks at camps and stuff like that. We, we didn't get all that much, you know, back in the eighties. Um, you know, we learned from our coaches in high school and sometimes to be honest with you, they were quarterback coaches. Um, so uh, it, it was, it was a little bit tougher. There were some camps, but it was different. So when I got to UCLA, I was recruited in the same recruiting class as Tommy Maddox and, um, oh, don't let me forget who made the running, the running quarterback, uh, Bert Emanuel, who, who was an incredible athlete. And to be honest with you, I think I was the third guy. It was, there was three quarters. It was right after Troy Aikman had graduated. And this was a, right after a great era, UCLA had won 20 games in two years. Brett Johnson was recruited uh, right the year before me. Um, and he was a big time. It was him and Todd Marinovich that were the two best quarterbacks like in the history of, you know, California football. So this was a, it was a tough time. And I went in there and, and you had to fight from day one. And so you talked about Dante Moore. And I, I think what this reminds me of is I had no freaking clue what I was doing. I had a strong arm. I was six foot four. I looked the part. I looked like a quarterback. Um, but I just, I had no clue. I didn't know how to, how to call blocking schemes. I didn't, I didn't understand football the way that I think, um, you need to, to play at that level. I just, I understood the basics, you know, and I was a good player, but I, I, there was a lot to learn. And so my first year or two, it was just a huge learning curve. That's why going back to your original point, Will, which, which, uh, was brilliant is that, you know, if you think a quarterback's just going to step on campus day one and have full command over, over Chip Kelly's offense, it's tricky. Now, granted, he has an opportunity to go through spring practice first, but it, it, it's going to be a real challenge. So just for me, um, I got injured, and so I had to watch Tommy Maddox play, and, uh, you know, and it was tough. Because I always felt like Tommy and I were very similar. We were both same height. You know, so he, had, he was a bigger recruit than I was. He played at a bigger school in Texas than I did uh, out here in Southern California. But, man, I was like, he got ahead of me when I got hurt. And I was like, I'm going to have to wait till I'm a junior or a senior before I get a chance to play. And then he decides to leave as a sophomore to enter the draft. And I was thrust from third string to – I went from fifth string to third string to first string. I mean, my jump was was pretty quick, but yeah, I had to beat out. And in reality, it was 1992. I had to beat out, yes, Rob Walker, and uh, but for the most part, I won. And this is what's funny about this: I won the job, just not on my talent. By by that time, I won the job because I knew more about the system and I understood what I was doing better than the other quarterbacks. Now, if you ask me. And I apologize to those guys. And some of those guys are still friends. I was better than they were. I was, I was a better athlete. I had a better arm. I was, I was better than they were, but I also knew the system better than they did. And, and with my coach, that was a huge deal. And to be honest with you, with every coach, it's a huge deal, right? When quarterbacks don't know what they're doing, it doesn't look good. So, but then I got hurt in my first game. Then I had to come back and, and coach Donnie told me I had to win the job again. And then you had a new player to the mix. It was Rob Walker and Ryan Fee. And Ryan Fien was a pretty big recruit and, and had a lot of confidence. And so I had to win the job again. And luckily I did. And we ended up going to a Rose Bowl that year. And then finally my senior year, I did not have to win the job again. I just got, I was the guy. So um, anyway, long answer here. Dante Moore is going to have to earn it. And, and you, you lose a team really quickly as a coach if you just anoint someone and everybody knows they're not ready. And you and I have talked about this before, Will. Uh, Garbers was a four-star guy that, that was a really good player, has a brother who's an NFL quarterback right now with the Raiders, who played starter for Cal, what seems like forever. Um, and, and so, you know, Ethan Garbers is, is a guy. He's athletic. He ran for a lot of yards. He fits the the what you want in a in a quarterback in the modern era. He's not just a runner. He's not just a passer. He can do both. I would argue that he's he's more of a pure. He's more of a passer, but he is oh, yeah. definitely an athlete, and he's a guy that has good credentials. So I, I think that when you when you talk about you can talk about Colin, you can talk about Martin, who I'm sure are the guys you're going to bring up. 
but but right now, every time I've watched Ethan Garber's play, I've gotten a little bit of this, and I I like to think I can judge talent. I'm like. I think he's really got a chance to be really good, which makes this thing really confusing because please don't think I don't think Dante Moore is the future because I do. He, I've seen enough video. I watched him in the all-star game he played in, and I just went, oh, my gosh, this guy's got all the talent in the world. Yeah. But if you throw him to the – you know, you put him out there too early, and, and we see this a lot in the NFL, and, and you watch him go through his struggles, like let's be honest with you. Um, our lot Dorian Thompson Robinson, he played before he was ready. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When, when Wilton Spade got hurt, he was thrust into that position. In his first year or two, he really was just trying to learn how to play the quarterback position. Now, Dante Moore was born to play quarterback, so he's much further along than Dorian, because Dorian was a receiver and we know that story. But but still, hey, if he wins it, it's gonna be because this guy's special. Because I think Garbers, we haven't talked about Colin Schley yet, who I think is really good also, yes. but also has to learn the system, correct? Oh, so yeah. I think that's where Garbers has this big advantage. He knows exactly what this system is. I guarantee you by this point in time, he's, he's got it. Like He knows every progression, every read. He just needs more experience under center. But then again, he has more of that than these other players do as well. And, I mean, you brought it up. I, Garbers, this is going to be his third year in the system. Yeah. And former four-star guy, I know some of the fan base in some of the comments were kind of, you know, trashing Garbers going, this is Moore's team, what are you doing? Listen, Chip Kelly even said the same at the Sun Bowl where he goes, hey, this is Ethan Garbers coming back. Like, this is not a home run for a guy like Dante Moore to come in and take the job. And speaking of the Sun Bowl, we lost that game because of defense uh, – you know, defense being inept at different times. Who led the, like, game, you know, leading drive? You know, when it was push come to shove, he came off the bench and, you know, put together a two-minute drill as well as you're going to see in the college football landscape. You know, he had one start in his career at UCLA, 265 yards, two touchdowns against a Utah team. I went to the Rose Bowl at Utah. And we didn't lose that game either because of the offense. It was the defense once again. That Utah team ran all over our, you know, putrid rush defense that game. You know, no other, no other way to say it other than that. This guy has it. And, you know, he's been kind of waiting in the wings to, you know, take that chance and become the starter for UCLA. I'm really excited to see him come out there because, you know, just from what I can see, I think he has a stronger arm than both Schley and Dante Moore coming in. I think he's got an absolute rocket the way he throws the ball. And, Wayne, tell me if I'm wrong on this. There was times where we saw him in mock-up duty last year where I thought to myself, maybe UCLA, if we had Garbers in a quarterback at times, we may have been a more well-oiled machine on offense. Do you think that's a crazy take to say that if Garbers played last year, it could have looked a little bit better on the offensive side of the ball? I'm not always allowed to tell the whole truth, Will. Um (laughs) <laughs> so I have to be, I, I want to be careful because I'll, I'm going to start this segment off by complimenting Dwayne Thompson Robinson, who I thought had a very good combine. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, people have underestimated his, um, his arm talent. And I've said that from the beginning, the guy throws an absolutely beautiful football. He's got an amazing throwing motion. He, he can, he, you know, I wish at times he had learned touch a little bit sooner. I thought he was showing it at the end. But I, I do think that Dorian sometimes missed opportunities on the outside. Um, I think for the first three years of his career, we really underutilized our outside receivers. We started seeing him coming around a little bit. He, he finally he says, okay, I like this Jake Bobo guy. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to throw him the ball. We also took a step back a little bit at tight end. We weren't quite as electrifying. Yeah, Kyle Phillips bullshit. was was gone. So the slot, and it, so, so it was a little bit more outside stuff, but I always noticed that whenever Ethan would come into the game, outside receiver, outside receiver, we'd be like, do we run outs anymore? And then Garbers would come in and he'd throw like two or three outs. We'd be like, oh, okay, so they're still in the playbook because different quarterbacks just see the field differently. You know, it just, it just seemed like the middle of the field was more Dorian's world. And, and I think, and I'm going to say the same thing about what I've seen about um, Dante Moore also. 
I think he's also going to be more willing. But we already saw in that all-star game he played and he threw a beautiful fade. And again, yeah. as, a, as a quarterback who loved to throw the, the fade to my guys, Kevin Jordan and J.J. Stokes, I feel like it's such a lost art. I feel like people only can throw a back shoulder fade that's on a line. I'm like, it's not that hard to just put a little touch pass out into the corner and let your receiver go get it. And it's just, I see it butchered so much. And in all-star games, you only have about a week to prepare with your teammates. And he threw it like he's been throwing it since he was five years old. I mean, it just looked easy. And I, it's still, and when you have the type of receivers that UCLA has, Jake Bobo last year, and, and when you had Dulcich before that, and now you throw in Sturdy. Kyle Ford, who I think is a huge pickup with his body and his size, and as long as he can keep his knees healthy, right? And, and we saw what he did against us in the, in the SCUCLA game. Um, and Sturdivant and, and some of the guys we have coming back, right, from, from last year, I just think, um, you know, being able to have that weapon to, to, to throw a fade, because then it opens up the slants and all the other things we do on the inside. I, I just think that when you have, and I think I think both Garbers and I think that Dante Moore, and um, I would have to watch a little bit more with, with Colin to see, because I did watch him of his Kent State film, but I don't think I've watched it enough to see how good he is at that. But uh, I am intrigued, by the way, by his athleticism. So I don't think that any of these guys are just going to lay down. And what's really cool, Will, is spring's going to matter this year. Yeah. And I, I'm going to tell you this. Um, Coach Kelly is great at giving guys reps, but when I was going through all my quarterback battles, and, and I, I guarantee you, Matt Stevens and, and you know Tom Ramsey and any of these guys will tell you, your stats in the spring game when we played mattered. Like I remember, you had a game where you went like twelve for seventeen for one hundred and fifty and a touchdown and no interceptions, and the other guy threw two picks and was right around fifty percent. It made it in the newspaper, and you walked away, again, a long time ago, no social media, and you walked away going, you know what, I'm, I, I, just, I just showed it. And I hope that with this kind of competition, we have some scrimmage days where the stats actually matter. Because I think they do matter. I think, I think some guys can look great in practice, great in practice, great in practice, but those scrimmages are different. There's referees, there's competition. Guys are tackling in, in, in many cases. And so if, if, if they do that, I, I hope I hope it matters because I think the competition is going to be as good as we've had in years. I couldn't agree more. And the next guy I want to bring up is Schley because you kind of alluded to in the previous point. This guy's coming in and he has, you know, 11 career starts to his name. He has something that nobody else in this quarterback room has. He's been the guy. He's been the guy they've trotted out there. And he's battle tested, man. I know he was in the MAC, but the three, you know, out of conference games they had last year: Georgia, Oklahoma, both on the road, and at Washington, who eventually won the Pac-12. I mean, these are quality opponents. And just to reference what he did against Georgia, he was 14 of 21, 171 yards, a touchdown, a pick. Max Duggan, who was up for the Heisman Trophy last year, TCU in the national championship. 14 of 22, 152 yards, zero touchdowns, and two interceptions. He outperformed a Heisman candidate with less weapons than that of a Max Duggan. This guy can ball. 13 touchdowns through the air, five interceptions, 98 carries on the ground, 492 yards, four touchdowns. And this is just the classic Chip Kelly guy that he wants in the offense, Wayne. When you look back at what he built at Oregon, the first guys there, the Dennis Dixons, the Jeremiah Masolis, you know, the Darren Thomases, you know, who was in that national championship. He fits that where it's a dual threat. You know, he makes great decisions and he can extend plays. And Wayne, I know you haven't seen the tape yet of Schlee, but I just want to get you this one play. There's this play he made at Oklahoma that it shows all of his capabilities in one. He's rolling out of the pocket, going to the left-hand side. Spin move evades pass rusher, goes towards his sideline, slings a 20-yard strike to the sideline the camera could not even keep up to. Yep. One foot inbound. And the announcer just goes, you know, who the heck is this guy? And I know if he wasn't on air, he'd be saying something a lot stronger than that. Yeah. Schley, I, I know he's not the big name coming in because he came from a MAC program, but this guy's not going to back down. From what you know of Schley, what makes you excited, Wayne? So, first of all, yeah, I love what you just said because from what I have watched, uh, you can see it. He can play. That's what makes it so interesting. I'm like, 
the first thing I thought of is, and, and I'm sure you did too, is like, why did he choose UCLA? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, and then, and then when, when, when Dante Moore signed and all this stuff's going on, I'm like scratching my head a little bit. I'm like, but I love it because UCLA has always been more than just football. Oh yeah. Like, people come here to get the degree and they come here for the academics and they come here for the environment. And they come here for all the good things, no matter how much stupid people out there act like UCLA. Oh, it's not that good. Why, why? Oh, they're, they're just following SC and they don't matter. You people don't pay attention. We're good at so many freaking things. Like currently yeah. right now, look at our basketball teams, our softball, softball teams. Our soccer. Gymnastics. I mean, we're so good at so many things. Baseball teams kicking butt. Like we're so good at so many things. And I think to be honest with you, people, just get tired of hearing about UCLA. Oh, well, you haven't done this in football. Well, pay attention to what we've been doing in football. We're getting better. We're putting a lot more guys into the NFL. Chip Kelly's got this thing going. So anyway, that's just my plug for UCLA, and I get grumpy at people. But um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. But 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 will like so when you see Colin, he's he's big, he's strong, he's got a good arm, he's athletic. Like I always look at guys' natural throwing motion, and he seems to have that. Like there's so much about him that I went. I really like this guy, which is why I, I think, you know, and again, for, for, for Justin Martin, who, who we're not talking about, but we'll get to he's a soon. guy that I know that the coaches love his work ethic and they, and he's big and strong and he's got a good arm. I do think he has some issues with his natural throwing motion. And I, I don't want to get too much into that, but what I, what I, what I love about quarterback play is that, you don't all have to look the same, but but there is something that I look for in the way someone throws a football because some of the guys, I don't know if you watch the combine. I do, yes. I've I've totally off the Will Levis. I watched some highlights of him early in his career and I was like, oh yeah. And then now I'm like, what are people seeing? He's got so many flaws in the way he throws and the way he does things. He Anthony dropped. Jefferson looked better. But he's got some issues, too, that we saw throughout the season. I actually thought that Dorian was a better thrower than both of those guys. And I, and, then, and But we, we, we go off hype so much. And, you know, we forget that Tom Brady and Peyton Manning were great. And, oh, would they still be great today? Yeah, they'd still be great today. One of them just retired at, like, 400 years old. They, and people act like you have to be able to look like, you know, like, you know, Anthony Jefferson's the future. I'm like, well, how many games did he win in college? Future? Thank you. Thank so, so anyway, I, I don't want to, I, I digress because winning in college doesn't always translate to being good in the NFL. We know that. Right. But, but I, I just think we've lost track of what makes quarterbacks great. And, and you pointed out a play that was off schedule. See how I did that? Well, I went five minutes and then I circled back to what you actually asked me. And I apologize about that. But the, the, the play that you're talking about, we see so many quarterbacks that can do that. And we just, I've, I've used this analogy before. It's like a drug. It's like, oh my gosh, did you see what the BYU quarterback did when he was rolling to his left? And I tell people this all the time. I'm like, you know, I, I wasn't even close to that athletic, but I guarantee you I could do that. I guarantee you I could do that. I could run to my left and skip back and throw it back across the field. I used to roll out to the left and throw comeback outs to the right side of the field from the hash mark just to show off my arm. Love it. The guys are throwing deep balls at the combine, and the announcers are like, oh, my gosh, this is the easiest freaking throw on the planet. <laughs> Take a five-step drop and throw a deep ball with no defense. It's not that hard. And I'm watching these guys miss throws left and right, and I'm like – and, again, I'm not acting like I hit all of them. I'm really not. But ask any quarterback that's played. Some of the stuff they're doing is just they're playing catch. There's no pass rush. There's no nothing, and we're losing our minds over – Oh, he threw it 70. I go, how many times is he going to make that throw in a game? True. Yeah. Most deep balls are 45 to 50 yards if they're done right. And so, anyway, I've been working looking on touch, timing, footwork, which, by the way, was pathetic, too. The UCLA quarterbacks are well coached. They have good – Dorian's drop was awesome. The All the quarterbacks, Garbers, all these have good drops, have good footwork. They're taught well. And so <laughs> – Again, I did it again, Will. You're landing <laughs> the plane. You're landing the plane. Yeah. The, the, the idea is, is that the person that's going to win this job is going to be that the person that can make the wild plays, but the person that makes all the plays. Like yeah. you know, These guys are so talented that you got to hit the right guy at the right time. you got to hit the right shoulder and make the guy catch the ball uh, 
on, on target so they can run after catch. You mentioned those Oregon teams. Okay. I'll go back to Jeremiah Masoli. I don't, I don't think anybody would tell you he was the greatest passer ever, but he had a knack of getting the ball to the right guys at the right time. He was athletic enough to move around and he was just, he was masterful on that offense. He was really, really good. Um, UCLA has, I think, more talent than that right now in the quarterback room. And if they can find a way to have a quarterback that makes the right decision and still has the ability to make those special plays that you just mentioned, that's great. But if you can make the right decision and get the ball to the right person at the right time, I'm telling you, this offense, you said it. I don't think it's been as good as it can be, and it was like the sixth best offense in the nation. I know we we underperform with these six best offense in the nation, Wayne, and I, it's just an exciting time to be a Bruin fan. And one thing I will say about Schley before we move on to Martin, when you watch him on tape, that just one word comes to mind: just moxie. This guy is yeah. willing to lay it on the line for his team to just get that extra yard, get every anything it needs, and it takes moxie to transfer to a school like UCLA in that quarterback room and think I'm going to come out and be the guy. Like he does, right? So, so, Will, this is why I love coming on with you, and I'm not just saying that because I know you know what you're talking about. There are people, and, and we get so wrapped up in the height and the weight and the jumping ability and the, the 40 time and how much they bench press and all this crud about arm strength and all that stuff. And you think about some of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Peyton Manning didn't throw that pretty of a ball. As a matter of fact, it wobbled all the time, but he, was, he oh, had God. so much – of that moxie you're talking about go back in in the old days. I know you're younger than me and go look up Joe Montana. Joe Montana never had the strongest arm on the, on on the field. I just listened to Kurt Warner the other day talking about people were talking about, like they were arguing with a a hall of fame quarterback, which is always funny to me. No, Kurt, you're wrong. And you have to have a gun to play in the NFL. Kurt basically just said, no, you just make your decision quicker and get the ball out, and the ball gets there at the exact same time. Thank you. Yes. And I'm like, you people are so – some people sometimes it's like, you guys don't grasp this. It, it, some When you learn to throw the ball on time and accurately to the right spots, arm strength, a lot of big arm guys, wait, 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 and then they try to drill everything, and we wonder why they don't make it in the NFL. It's, 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 it's because it's not – you can't do that. You, you won't survive. So, so to, to me, um, the moxie that you talked about, the between the ears, the way they think, all the intangibles, that That's matters a real stuff. That's Some a real guys, stuff. when the lights are on, are amazing. So, like, we'll go back. Remember Kate McNown, right? Great oh, UCLA yeah. quarterback. His last two years, it felt like almost every single time he needed to make a play, he made a play. He just had that ability to third long, I'm going to third and 15. I'm going to get third and 16 or I'm going to scramble for it. I'm going to do it. Some guys have that unbelievable ability. Drew Luck had it when he was at Stanford oh, yeah. third and whatever. He always got it. Like some guys have it. And, and we, we, we look at all this other stuff and that's the stuff that you should really be looking for. And that's going to be the next great NFL quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. People think he's so athletic. He ran a four, eight something. I know. He's yeah. just got this ability, though, to move enough, to run enough. He's got this stupid un- – he's got all the intangibles you, you want in a quarterback, and hopefully we've got three or four guys at UCLA that have those intangibles uh, because it's just – it's exciting. But we're still going to have to wait and see who's going to rise up. It's going to be fun, and I'm going to get to Martin in a second, but – I'm very aligned with you when it comes to the quarterback position. And we hear all this hype about Anthony Richardson. And, you know, he ran this 40 time, his vert. None of that has to do with the quarterback position. And it's also just based on the fact that, you know what my favorite trait of a quarterback is? A guy that, you know, plays the position actually very well. Richardson did not do that. He almost completed nearly roughly 50% of his passes last year. And I got to ask you this before we transition to Martin. Do you have a top three quarterbacks coming out for the NFL draft this year? Who are your three guys that you saw? I have two. I have two. My 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 number one is is CJ Stroud. Um, yeah, same. And, I, and I, he's he's tricky because I don't want people to compare him to all the other Ohio State quarterbacks because I think he's different. I do agree. Dan Orlovsky posted something the other day, and he's right. 
He said that look at the film and look at how open his receivers are all the time. And I'm like, you know, that's true. That is true. But he does have the most natural, accurate. He's just a natural thrower. He doesn't run much in the last game that they lost to Georgia, which they almost won, by the way, against one of the greatest defenses around. He looked awesome that whole game. And he did use his legs enough. But I think we get too enamored with that in, our, in, in the modern world of football. Like, if you're not running, you must not be good. Remember the Jalen Hurts stories of the world? Jalen Hurts is awesome. I, I've met Jalen Hurts. I got to interview him. I love him. I love how hard he works. But he has to, and again, I'm sorry, but he has to be in the perfect situation. He needs to have a great defense. He needs to be a running back who throws the ball because that's how they use him. And he's now a really smart coach. So he had the perfect situation for that. But if you put Jalen Hurts and asked him to do what, what the Super Bowl winner does, it's not going to happen. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He does, and I love Jalen, but he's not that type of thrower. He's a, you have to run a certain system for him. And, and, and God bless the, 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 the coordinators in the NFL finally woken up to that over the last decade or two and be like, hey, how about we start running schemes to fit our personnel? which is what Chip yeah. Kelly does, by the way. Um, <laughs> and so I'm like, thank, because you can have different types of quarterbacks. But at the end of the day, CJ is my number one. Uh, Bryce Young is a close number two. Um, Great, I think man. those two are the two best throwers. Um, obviously, Bryce has more athleticism. But again, you could compare him to like a Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray's kind of fizzled. Now, granted, part of that might be what's going on with his attitude and all that stuff. And I don't know yeah. how much of that is true or false or – because I don't, I never liked the Cliffs Kingsbury hire in the first place because it didn't seem like he was winning that much in college. So I didn't really get that. That one was weird. I never, it was weird, but, that. yeah, yeah I, I don't know about, but anyway, my point is, is that um, those are my two best. And then there's a huge gap. There's a huge gap. And uh, I, I'm intrigued by, I'm going to go back to Dorian. I'm intrigued by Dorian, though, because I think he has a, a chance to go to a team where he can sit and watch and learn. And I think that they're going to be enamored with his ability to throw and run. And he is, he's not as big as Jalen, which, which is, is, would make it difficult, but they're allowing athletic quarterbacks to run around more and more. And I think guys like that last in the NFL now, because they're great when they come off the bench, I'm not saying Dorian can't be a starter, but guys like that coming off the bench kind of add something to your team. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense what I'm trying to say, but I, I think the running quarterback, like the Tyler Huntley's of the world. Of course. He's yeah. not. I, I never thought he was. I mean, listen, I'm not putting anybody down because all these guys went farther than I did. I'm just a person that studied the position, and, and I feel like I understand it. I always thought Tyler Huntley was limited because of his throwing ability. But he's also playing in a system in Baltimore where they mask that. Play great defense, run the football, and you don't have to do too much. And then people say, well, hey, but they win a lot of games. I'm like, but if you put him on some of these other teams, he just doesn't – they're just not good enough throwers. I think Dorian's a better thrower than a lot of these guys, and I still, still think he's got a lot to learn about reading defenses and processing things. And so I think he's got upside still. So he's going to okay. be interesting for me to watch. Yeah, and I mean, you saw Chris Sims has been one of the more accurate predictors of quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. He had him tied at number five for the yeah. with Will Levis actually coming out. I think so, I mean, just, I'm telling you, man, Will Levis's combine. I couldn't believe how many people said he looked good. I'm like, what are you watching? I mean, I always thought I thought he killed he himself. He'd have been better off. He would have been better off before this year started. He had so much hype coming into this year of just saying, you know what, I'm going to sit out and declare for the draft next year. Because I, I think if, if there's GMs out there that were and again, I'm sorry. I'm sure he's a great guy. But, man, I, I didn't see it. I, I, I see an athlete, an amazing athlete. But are you going to have him be Taysom Hill? Or is he going to be a guy that is going to be a quarterback? And I just saw too many flaws in his throwing motion and, 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 it, and his footwork. And, and I, I was it scared that Jefferson looked better than him. But, yeah. But still has some quirks, too. Yeah, Richardson, I'm not there yet. Uh, you know, Levis. That's who I, I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Levis. You know what I meant. He has he has a very strong arm. Um, you know, I like some of the things he did, but man, that's it almost like the tape hurt him more coming back this year. And then you know, on top of that, he has a poor combine. Yeah. 
yeah. man, he's dropping, you know, down to like the, you know, the teens in the twenties when it comes up to this draft now from all the mocks that I've seen, but let's take it to Justin Martin. This guy to me, when he came last year, I went, Oh my God, this is the next UCLA quarterback. That's going to have a realistic chance at making the NFL. You see the size, this guy was six foot four, two twenty two, rolling into campus last year. Like we don't even know what this guy weighs now. I think by the time if he gets on the field, he'd be around six foot four, two forty, kind of built like an Anthony Richardson in terms of just size and arm strength and what he can bring to the table. Very raw. I mean, you saw him in spring practice last year. He's doing a lot of great things. I think this guy has the potential to be very, very good if given the keys to the car down the line. Give me your takes on Justin Martin, because as a recruit, I think UCLA fans were as excited as just about anyone before Dante Moore committed, you know, in the fold for the for UCLA. So, first of all, thanks for being so smooth with me saying Anthony Jefferson is a receiver. <laughs> and you just knew who I was talking about. I knew who um, you were talking about. Tell you, man, I always tell people I teach eighth graders all day. So sometimes at the end of the day, my brain's my brain's a little mush. But um, <laughs> yeah, Justin Martin, I think he's actually even bigger than that, Will. I mean, I, I'm always – I stand next to him, and I'm, I'm pushing 6'4". I'm just just a little bit under 6'4". And I'm like, dude, you're huge. But he's a big dude. I talked to – gosh, was it – it might have been last spring. I talked to Coach Gunderson, and I said, I said, come on, man. I go, tell me about, tell me about Justin. And he just goes, Wayne, he goes, he is so coachable. Ooh, he works great. so hard. And I love that. Like to me, you know, and, and the idea that he's got this quarterback room and his name's not in the transfer portal. I, I like that. Now there is a time there is where you have to say, Hey, listen, I, I gotta go. And I don't condemn that because the quarterback position, only one guy plays like it's, but, but like with Garbers, when he got a chance to play, when people got injured, like, you get in and you show what you can do. And like we did what we were just talking about before about some guys, when the lights come on, you're like, okay, okay. Like Brett Hundley gets in the game for the first time on the first play goes 70 yards. Yeah. You know, okay. Okay. Maybe we, maybe we got someone who could win 20 games in two seasons and beat SC three times. Um, some guys are good when the lights come on. Right. And so, so, so what Justin has shown me is a guy with huge potential with great work ethic. Still has work to do on the mechanics and the processing. See, what happens with some of our best athletes, and I, and I, really all of our quarterbacks are elite athletes, is they need to be coached at a young age to not rely on that as, as much as they can. Like when you have a big arm, remember the game he threw like in high school? Didn't he have like a game? 14 like, touchdowns? Some, yeah. Something ridiculous. And I remember seeing the highlights for that. But sometimes we get we get when we're just that much better than everybody else and we have that many you get kind of lazy and, and and I'm not saying he did this, this is not my point. My point is is that there's still so much growth. He needs to he needed to be watching, and I know he was. Watch Dorian, not just the things he did well, but what did he need to work on? You know, how, what what were his what were his strengths and weaknesses? You have to take all these mental reps when you're in a crowded quarterback room where you're constantly learning from other people and what they do well and what they don't do well. And you're trying to find your way. And like we've talked, I've had years where I've watched UCLA in my over 20 years covering the team. This goes all the way back to Drew Olson. And I forget who the quarterback that went to Oregon state. There was a battle between Drew Olson and um, oh my gosh, real skinny, really good player. Went and had a good career there played in the NFL for a long time. More, Matt Moore. And oh, yeah. I remember watching those guys and we were torn between Olsen and Moore. Like, who should play? Who should play? Who should play? Um, but there's been years where it's been lean. I mean, like, we have maybe a starter, and then who's the backups? Now it's like, I think there's four guys that could literally be good in this offense. Now, part of that's because of what Chip Kelly's developed. Oh, yeah. Because because you and I know this, Will, because we know football – there have been some really good quarterbacks up in the years at UCLA where our offensive line sucked. We've had no running game. We we've had we don't play defense, and then we're like, well, why are our quarterbacks so bad? Well, well who's going to succeed in that situation? So, so I think right now we're we're always great on the offensive line under Chip Kelly. We run the heck out of the ball with Carson Steele and, and TJ coming back, and and Keegan. I don't think that's going to stop. 
I really yeah. don't. Um, I, I, I think we're just going to, with all the transfer we've bought in, I think this offense is set up for whoever starts. You kind of have to not blow it. You have really? a chance to be one of the best offenses in the nation. And so whoever wins this job is getting the key to the Ferrari, right? So it's going to be intriguing to me. And if, if, if it were to be Justin – or if maybe he works his way up the ladder a little bit and gets a chance to play because of an injury, or maybe when he gets in in the third quarter because UCLA's winning by three or four touchdowns, and you get in and you see a guy that's like, hey, wait a second, this guy's the real deal. That's kind of how you have to do it. But he's fighting because right now it looks like he's going into spring probably around number four. Maybe number three. You know, maybe you tell the freshman, hey, buddy, I know my coach would have done that. Be like, I don't know, I don't, I don't care what your NIL is, I don't care how many stars you had by your name. We're glad you're here, but you've got to start from the bottom and work your way up. And it'd be interesting if that's like what happens. No, and that's that's the point I'm making with Dante Moore. Like he's coming in as the highly highest recruited quarterback UCLA's ever had, but those stars disappear the second you get on campus. You got to prove yourself week in and week out. So. You know, I'm going to pose you with one last quarterback question before I go into the transfer portal a little bit with you. If it came down to either starting Dante Moore, the opening game, and we're talking about September 2nd, we're playing Coastal Carolina opening week in the Rose Bowl. Are you going Dante Moore as the starter, or are you taking the field when it comes to who will be under center for UCLA football come September 2nd? So first off, Will, let's start with the important things. Coastal Carolina is a real game. Yeah. So every Bruin fan listening, and by the way, Will, you have good following because I, I hosted the uh, the UCLA football banquet this year, and um, I had several people come up and talk to us about uh, our interview together. Really? They, they listened cool. and they loved it, and it was funny too. Some people were giving me credit about what I – I don't know if you remember, but I talked about Dulcich having just a little bit better hands than Jake Bobo. People always say, you guys, when I'm talking about two greats, it, it's not like I was insulting Jake Bobo. I love Jake Bobo. I just love think that Bobo. They're, they're, they're A and 1A and 1B when it comes to hands. And, and Jake Bobo had a great combine too, by the way. Um, really looked good. And he's going to he's gonna fit somewhere. So I was not insulting him. I love the guy. Um, but, but it's so funny how people get worked up about that stuff. <laughs> just an opinion anyway. You don't have to agree with me. Um, <laughs> What was I? What was I? I was going to come back to it. You asked me, oh, but I wanted to make sure. Listen, it's a real game. I know their quarterback's gone, but we need to show up at the, at the Rose Bowl. That's important because I'm tired of people talking about our attendance. I don't care if it's 120 or 10 degrees. This team has earned it two years in a row. We're starting to win more and more games. We're recruiting at a high level. Let's show up. So that being said, um, if I had to gamble, and please, again, Cook, you're an idiot. Why would you say that? I'd probably take the field. Okay. And, and, yes. and, and, and the reason why is because, I, I, again, we talked about this before. Um, quarterback is a very difficult position. And Dante Moore is one of the most talented. I, I watched that. I keep telling you, I watched his highlight, and I watched that, that, that all-star game where he had like four touchdown passes. He had a seam route. He had a fade route. He had a. I mean, he's he had two guys about to kill him in an all-star game when they're not supposed to blitz, and he's throwing a slant across the middle and stepping into. I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm watching the game, and I'm texting Matt Stevens. I'm like, dude, are you watching this? <laughs> this is the guy. This is Troy Aikman, Brett Hundley. Like, this is this is it. This Program is changer. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're ready day one. If we know our history. Cade McNown, if you go back and look at his stats his first two years as starter at UCLA, he threw a ton of interceptions. Even Tommy Maddox, who was a first-round draft choice, I tell people this all the time, he threw 30-something interceptions in two years. Okay? I was like I, – I started my junior and senior year, and I had seven. Yeah. So wow. he started as a freshman. We had the same number of touchdown passes, 33-34. He had 33 or 34 interceptions. I had seven. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm better than Tommy Maddox. I'm just saying that I was a junior and a senior. Well, statistically, you were kind of. Well, but well, I get we, we could we could we could talk about that some other day. Yes. But but like the idea is that 
that it was just, it was just, I had a little bit more experience as far as like I'd been in practice longer and stuff like that. So when you start a freshman, you're going to get growing pains. And I know people will say, well, Cook, what about the freshman that started for this team? Or what? Yeah, if you're a freshman and you start at Georgia next year, you're going to have a better chance of success because they're better than everybody else everywhere else. UCLA has been playing with, and again, this is not a knock on UCLA. Our defense is gradually getting better. I know everybody's kind of excited about, at least I am, I'm excited about the new defensive coordinator. And that's yeah, not only. a knock on McGovern because I really liked him. But I, I'm excited about the youth. I'm excited about what Baltimore Ravens have done. I'm excited about some of the changes we've made um, on the defensive staff. But when you're a quarterback and your team doesn't play defense, it makes things hard. And so I've always said, get us in the top 50 in the nation with a top to 10 offense. And I'm like, we're, we're, we're going places. So, um, again, I'm taking the field because the talent in that room and because it's really hard, even though he's so talented, doesn't mean he won't be starting game three or four. Wait, crazy, right? That Or game seven or eight. Or, you know, we don't know what's going to happen because this conference showed last year whether it's dying or whether it's alive, the Pac-12 was as good as it's been last year, and almost all those great quarterbacks are coming back. Like, it's it's, gonna be it's kind, of, kind of stupid what this conference has, and so it's going to be a gauntlet. So I'm taking the field, but I just explained why. It doesn't mean that Dante Moore is not the most talented. I don't know if he is or not yet because we talked about Schley. We talked about Garbers. And the wild card would be Martin to see if he can make that huge jump this offseason. But it's going to be tough to, to compete against guys that have been on the field in college before and been there, done that. And listen, Dante Moore, I think people think of me when I'm saying he's going to have to earn the job. I think a lot of people hate that comment. Yep. Listen, I am super high on Dante Moore. Yeah, and tell me if you see this comparison, because this was a guy that Chip recruited – he planted the seeds of this guy, but he never got to see the success because he had left for the NFL. To me, he is a shorter Marcus Mariota with the ball placement. He, they do something very, very similar. And Mariota, I think the, the best trait he had for me coming out, yes, he could extend plays with his legs. Yes, you know, he, he's the signal caller. It was the accuracy. The accuracy was a 10 out of 10, you know, at the college level. At the college level, yeah. And what I could see from Dante Moore coming out of high school, obviously college is a big jump, but if I was to grade one trait, you know, from his film, I think it's the accuracy, which separates him among the other quarterbacks there. Do you agree with that take that, you know, I, I think this is the guy that Chip wanted in Mariota and he's bringing him in right. with Dante Moore. So Marcus Mariota is a college, you know, I don't know if he is yet, but he's going to be a college football oh, player. Right? He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's Tim Debo. He's Marcus was great. He was, yeah. he was a part of, of that world that, that kind of changed college football. Right. Like, you know, it started earlier than that. You threw out Dennis Dixon and, and all the quarterbacks that came before him at, at, at Oregon when they were doing their thing. But Marcus kind of took it to the, to the pinnacle. Um, Dante Moore is a better natural thrower than, Marcus Mariota. I love to hear it, man. I, I mean, I, again, we, we, we saw, like, we talked about the NFL earlier. Um, and obviously he has to prove it, so whatever. I mean, Marcus is a gamer. Gross. He's one of the best college quarterbacks ever. Marcus Mariota, though, falls into the – and, again, I agree with you on the accuracy, but the way those, those offenses were run, you know, he wasn't always throwing into the tight windows and having to do some – so in the NFL, I actually think Marcus's throwing ability limited him a little bit. Sure. You know, that yeah. sounds weird. I, I, I know he's an athlete. I know he can move around. But I've always argued that that um, that some of the most athletic quarterbacks, when they're young, they if the main guy's not open, they know they can just take off and go score a touchdown and all the cheerleaders and everybody else, like, woo we love you. You're amazing. When, when, when quarterbacks that are throwers – they're stopping. They're looking over at the line of scrimmage and they're trying to buy time so they can find a guy to throw the ball to. And there's something to be said about like when, from when you're little and you're moving your way up, those quarterbacks just become so gifted at, at throwing from all positions on the field. And we know that Dante Moore is athletic. I'll, I'll go back to one of the quarterbacks we talked about earlier, Bryce Young. You watch Bryce Young. He wants to throw. 
he does not want to run. When he scrambles and moves around, he's looking for people to throw to until he has to run. I, I, I'm a fan of that. I'm not use your legs when you have to, but yes, but, but 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 I like that. And Dante's that guy. He wants to throw the ball. He's not going to be as electric with his legs from what I've seen of, of Mariota. Mariota's faster, uh, but he's agile. He moves around more like I hate doing this. More like a, a, a Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes is agile the way he moves around, but he's always he's got all the arm angles. And if you've watched Dante Moore, he does too. He can rip it sidearm. He can throw it overhand. He gets touch. He can throw a, a heater. He he does. He seems to have a great grasp of the whole field. So a lot of this stuff seems natural to him. So I'm just saying this. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think he's a better natural thrower of the ball than Marcus was. I just pointed out that Marcus is probably better with his legs, but we'll Please, see. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding, though. Marcus played in a national championship game that was close to winning one, and Dante's just getting started. So, he, like you he said, he's got to prove it when he gets on the field. He's got to prove it, man, and I think he will. You know, I think this is the chosen right. one coming to UCLA that's going to take us to a program that's going to be competing for those college football playoffs, you know, at the next did, level. Did, so. did you see, Will, did you see his Um. Did you see his story with uh, with his father? And I don't know if you saw the – I think I did. That. They showed it at the all-star game and, and, you know, I'm a huge character guy. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of, of all the athletes out there that are in love with themselves, you know, first, second, third, and fourth. And, and they, they kind of are like, Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, I'm a big fan of team guys because, you know, I, I've always liked the idea that when you're really good, people know you're good. You don't have to tell them. You know, and I, I get it. We live in a world where everybody's, you know, got to gotta praise themselves some because that's the world we live in. But, like, from what I've seen of Dante so far, when I watch this interview, he seems like a humble kid. He seems like he's a gym rat, like he loves football. He seems like a kind of guy that his teammates rally around. Like, to me, uh, you can, you know, people can say this till the end of time. We mentioned Kyler Murray earlier. Like, sometimes we find out later on that guys aren't, you know, and again, I'm not trying to pick on Kyler Murray either because I'm not there and I don't know. But but sometimes guys just aren't healthy in the locker room. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a half of our society that doesn't care. They just care about people getting paid and their stats. But you'd be surprised how much it matters to have a locker room of guys that want to be there and want to work hard and want to play together. And UCLA has that. I can tell you as an insider, these players genuinely like each other. And Coach Kelly genuinely and his staff, they recruit people. Like Zach Charbonnet is one of the best. Uh, someone's going to oh get a God. great NFL running back. Yeah. That dude's character is off the charts. Joshua Kelly, remember him? His character was oh, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Preach. We're yeah. recruiting at UCLA the type of people that – that you want to be friends with for life that you can, you can be proud of. And I think it matters. And so UCLA maybe hasn't gotten to the mountaintop. You were about to mention us playing for, for championships and playoff bursts. Cause especially when we go to 12, um, and by the way, can I just say this now? Like for people that are acting like the big 10 is like, Oh, there's so the pac 12 was better than the big 10 last year. And I'm not, I'm not disparaging the conference we're going to be moving to, but under, I mean, it's not like Ohio State, yeah, they're great. Michigan's been good. But under that, it's not like those teams are better than Washington and Oregon. And, and some, you know, it's like, to me, it's like, it's still going to be difficult. Man. It's but I don't, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, it is what it is. But I'm not scared of a lot of those teams, especially in the trajectory UCLA is going. You know, and just with, and Wayne, you've been so gracious with your time. I just got a couple more questions before we wrap up. But it's just, it is kind of tragic that finally when the Pac-12 is starting to find its footing, I would bet the house, like, find me better quarterbacks in any conference this year than what we have returning to the Pac-12. And just some of the mid-major teams that really stepped up last year, you know, your Oregon State. I mean, they were yeah. phenomenal. They beat a Florida team with, you know, that SEC ball. They got smoked in the Vegas Bowl. You look at... Utah, I think Arizona is going to be the surprise team this year with Jed Fish being there. Jaden Delora, these type of guys. I think Dillian M's a great hire at Arizona State. I don't think it'll work out year one. I think he's going to be really good. You know, Washington, 
wow. I mean, that team, that team should be the number one team maybe coming back to the pack if you look at what Penix Jr. did because they finished number one last year and they're returning a lot of their talent. You know, USC is back. UCLA is better than they've been. You know, it's just it's, it's an exciting time to be looking at Pac-12 football. It's a shame it's ending. But, Wayne, I will end on one last question for you. I think UCLA, in terms of what they've been able to do with the transfer portal, is outstanding. I think Chip Kelly does not get enough credit for what he's been able to do there. And you look at the classes coming in and just the amount of guys we have, you know, in the high teens of guys that are coming in and going to be making impactful, you know, starting starts for the guys coming in. I want to hear your the guy you're most excited about on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball when it comes to the transfer portal for UCLA and why. So probably Carson Steele. Um, I don't know if you've been paying attention to social media. Someone referred to him as Thor. Yeah. Uh, this dude's freaking a beast. Um, and, and, and please do not think I'm discounting TJ Harden and what he did. Oh, this God. is a 1500 yard rusher who, if you watch him, he runs exactly the way that Deshaun Foster, I mean, he's just powerful. He's, he's got good forward lean. He makes yards after contact, but he's way more athletic than I think people are giving him credit for. He's got quicks. He can jump over you. He can run through you. He can run by you. I just think he's going to be a great fit for this offense. And then when you mix in the depth that we have, which remember when we lost Britton Bat Brown, it was like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And we, we were trying because we had a couple of small backs and, and, and Allen and um, Kat with, with Kaz and Keegan. Um, and those guys are great, but you also want to have now if we could just keep TJ healthy, Carson, and then throw Keegan in as well. Like, that's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. And I know that, that UCLA has been a dominant run team. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see him. I thought that was a great pickup. Um, Sturdivant from, from Cal, I think yes. has a chance to be a, a, a really big and, and on Cal Ford, I'll, I'll mention him too. And this not to discount the other receivers. Cause I think we've got a loaded receiver room, even with what we lost. Um, so I, I think Cam Brown started coming on at the end of the year. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And I, I think, uh, Pagan, the, the young, uh, good size. I know we lost Sykes who I like too. We just got so much talent. But I'm, I keep saying whoever the receivers are, I mean, whoever the quarterback is, has all this stuff to play around with. And so – Tight end um, room, too. Matavo, Habermill, Carson so Ryan. Matavo, like, how how big is that guy? He's big, he's, man. He's huge. Like, I feel like we haven't had as good of tight ends as far as receiving ability. And, again, that's not a knock on the guys. It's really not. But those guys are still blocking their butts off. And when you bring in a, the, the big man from Oregon, it's only going to help. And it just it gets me salivating with how good our run game is. And you said it before, when you if you get a quarterback that can pull the trigger and really run the offense the way I think it's intended to be run, I just think it could be scary. I still think there's upside. I think we could be as good. And I know people are going to think I'm crazy. And again, we'll talk. We should talk about up front too. Because we lost some pieces. That's but we're bringing in, I, there was a, we, we got a recruit from Purdue. Which is Holstein, Spencer yeah. Holstein. So, yeah. so like, I think they're going to be okay there. But, man, I, I'm, I'm excited. But we should probably look at the other side of the ball. Um, Anderson from, from Bowling Green. At, at oh, that yeah. was a necessity. Oh, yeah. Like, right? We're, we're losing our guys back there. And so he's going to be key. Um, I think that was a huge pickup because he's pretty good. And I, think, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. a four-star guy, right? As far as yeah. in the transfer portal on two four seven, so yeah. he can play, and so we needed that. And then the linebacker from um, Oladejo, from right? Yeah, Olade, that he guy. Had Fifteen I, tackles against us, or seventeen. So, and you just pickup. add that guy, uh, Wayne, and I like you add Oladejo to mm -hmm. Mawasau coming back, and I mean, John John Vons. I mean, he might be a better. He's hitting home runs right now. Yeah. He might be a better baseball player than football player. I mean, what this guy's doing on the diamond, like MLB scouts are taking notice of this dude, but damn. And what I didn't even know, I had to really look, and I, I consider myself, you know, someone that puts the time and effort in for UCLA. I'm going, oh, my God, we're getting Carl Jones back? We're getting Madrano back? Just how deep that linebacking room is. And, Wayne, this is a hot statement. 
But I think this is the most loaded UCLA football has been since those Hunley, Anthony Barr, Kendricks teams, Jonathan Franklin back in 2013-2014. If they can just find the right quarterback, yeah. man, this is going to be special. I agree, and I and I don't think whoever wins because of what we talked about earlier, whoever wins the quarterback job, I'm I'm going to tell you this right now. They're gonna. I really believe this. They're going to have a very good year. I, agree I, I just think that. there's too much talent around these guys. I think whoever wins this job is going to be stoked. And if we if the defense and we we didn't talk about this, but the fact that Latu is back. Oh my gosh! And, and 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 I'm gonna tell you guys this: like he's he's like you know we know that Jalen Phillips is the one that got away and he's doing pretty well in the NFL and I I wasn't always sure if that was gonna be the case because I didn't know if he could stay healthy and I, we always saw his athleticism. Latu's got an engine, a motor. He's got so much talent. He's got so much size. So smart of him to come back because if UCLA ends up winning, if UCLA ends up winning, you know, ten games. And goes on a run that, and, and again, whenever Dante Moore starts playing, and you know that's so recruiting is just going to keep getting better and better because when you win, it gets better and better. Um, more exposure with the Big Ten, better and better. I, I just think that, like, like Latu's going to have a year this year that's going to put him pretty high up in the draft. And I think he made a very good decision. We have the Twins coming back. We have all these athletes, Musau. You mentioned I have always thought Kay Madrano had a chance with another year in the weight room of he's so athletic. Please yeah. just stay healthy. You know, he just he gets dinged up a lot. John John Vaughn's is so athletic. Carl Jones has been my breakout player for the last two years. And like yeah, you know, he's just, coming back. It's just to me, it's just there's a lot of guys. And 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 we you know, we did bring in some uh the, the Oregon transfer. And again, I know you have I don't have the names. Keanu Williams. Keanu the Williams. defensive lineman. Yep. That matters. I tease Coach Kelly at that. That I was hosting the banquet the day the day that he was like transferred, and I'm like, just keep bringing in those D tackles because <laughs> Toia was a great pickup. And by the way, do we oh. also love Will? All the guys coming from SC to UCLA, but they don't. Beautiful thing, that. Wayne. It's a beautiful thing. Direction. It's a beautiful thing. Love it. Yeah, man. Well, bro, I'm so honored to have you on as always. Wayne Cook, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're liking and subscribing to the LA Football Network channel for UCLA. Make sure you're supporting our guys, man. This is going to be a big year. Spring practice is open to the public. We want to see a lot of people out there this year. So make sure you're getting out to Westwood. It's not going to be at the Rose Bowl for the people in West LA like myself. It's going to be a little bit easier to get to. So let's see some fans out there supporting our Bruins. Any last thoughts, Wayne? Yeah, Will, you keep doing what you do, buddy. I, I told you this last time. You 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 know this team. And you're and you're good at what you do. You're a good interviewer, even with someone that, that never shuts up. Um, <laughs> so keep that. doing it. And and everybody out there, let's go Bruins for the Sweet 16. It's been fun. I, I love watching the, the this and our, the UCLA is on the rise right now. We have got so much talent. And when basketball and football are good together, and don't forget, my senior year, we went, we went to a Rose Bowl my junior year, and the 1995 National Championship Daddy. team was my senior year. And I think there was a freshman with the name of Toby Bailey, another Bailey. I know we have Amari Bailey now. I don't think they're related, but who knows? This could be a special, special season. So go Bruins. Get by Gonzaga, and the floor is yours, Bruins. Let's tune in, UCLA fans. Bruin Bible, we are officially out.